To the race for the White House now, Democratic Congressman and presidential candidate Dean Phillips is making an appeal to progressive voters endorsing Medicare for all legislation. The Minnesota congressman is running along with a very small number of Democrats against Joe Biden for the Democratic nomination. Phillips formally launched his campaign back in October in the battleground state of New Hampshire. And just last month, Phillips announced he will not seek re-election to Congress next year and focus on this presidential bid. Congressman Dean Phillips, kind enough to join us now. Uh, Congressman, I want to start with your endorsement for Medicare for All legislation. Why now, and is this in line with the direction of the party? Well, why now? It's, in fact, it's long overdue, Lindsay. Uh, we've been thinking about this for literally decades. Uh, Roosevelt and Truman, all the way to Richard Nixon, believe it or not, who proposed national health care for everybody. We've never gotten it done. And as a presidential candidate now for two months, I have to tell you the heartbreaking stories that I hear almost every day. Families going bankrupt because they're just one illness away from it. So many people, 40% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency, 60% living paycheck to paycheck. We spend more for health care in the United States than any country in the world. Our outcomes are mid-pack. We pay more for pharmaceuticals, and it's a disaster. And nine, I think 26, I'm sorry, 26 million Americans have no health insurance at all, 90 million underinsured. And we've done nothing. So I am proposing Medicare for all. I want to have a thoughtful bipartisan negotiation because this affects red parts of America just as much as blue. And it is time, just as a country that affords public education for every child, we should be a country that ensures everybody has access to health care. It's long overdue. It's actually a very centrist, reasonable, common sense and moderate solution to a horrifying problem in the United States. Let's talk about the fight that you're waging against the current president. According to a recent Emerson College poll, Biden is leading uh, you in New Hampshire by 12 percentage points. You're also pouring a lot of your own money, a lot of your own time into this campaign. Without the backing or the support of the DNC, how do you garner the recognition nationally that's necessary to become president? Yeah, Lindsay, it's not easy. I'm working not to just not to just to win the nomination of the Democratic Party, but I'm sadly finding myself having to work against the Democratic Party that seems to be um, unwilling to practice democracy, and that's deeply troubling. I, I respect President Biden, but I also read numbers, I read polls, and I read national sentiment, and President Biden is not electable. He is going to lose to Donald Trump, and anybody who cares about the future for their children, their grandchildren, for this great country and our freedoms, uh, they're all under threat if we have another Trump presidency. So I believe in, it's important in the United States to have options for voters. Where do you differ from President Biden when it comes to actual policy? And I, I know that, that you think you're the man for the job, but I am curious, aside from his age, what makes you that man? Well, let's just talk about experience. Yes, President Biden has a lot of experience, but it's all inside the Washington Beltway, 50 years. I have led businesses, I've built them. I've been the chair of a board of a health system, a regent at a university, I've led a charitable foundation, and now I've served three terms in the House of Representatives. I was a member of House Democratic leadership, and I'm currently the ranking member of the Middle East Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs and the vice ranking member of the Small Business uh, uh, Committee. But in terms of policy differences, I support Medicare for all. I believe we need national health insurance for everybody. I also believe we have a crisis at the southern border that has been unaddressed, not just during the Biden administration, but historically for the better part of five decades. I favor the legalization of cannabis because most states have decided they want to, and it is incongruent with federal law. President Biden has not taken steps to do so. You know, we do have differences of opinion, but most of them are really relative to the future. And I'm proposing it's time for a new generation. I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm competent, I'm a person of character, and I'm seeking people's votes because the alternative, Donald Trump, is going to be a horrifying disaster for everybody. Young voters are, are very clear. They do not like the way Biden is handling the Israel-Hamas war. How would you do things differently? I have called for an immediate ceasefire upon the release of the hostages, period. It should happen concurrently. It is time for a multinational peacekeeping force to enter Gaza, not to include Israelis and American soldiers. And then Hamas has got to be eliminated, Lindsay. It is one of the most atrocious terror organizations in the world. They are holding eight American hostages as we speak tonight for over two months. And if I were president of the United States of America, I would make that an issue front and center every single day. I would not rest until we extracted them, 
or gain their release through our diplomatic channels. Congressman Dean Phillips, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.